If Brigham Young was a true prophet, how come one of your later prophets overturned his declaration, which stated that the black man could never hold the priesthood in the LDS church until after the resurrection of all other races? In Journal of Discourses, December 12, 1854, 2, 142 through 143. Question four. If Brigham Young was a true prophet, how come one of your later prophets overturned his declaration which stated that the black men could not hold the priesthood in the LDS Church until after the resurrection of all other races? This is taken from Journal of Discourses, Volume 2, pages 142 through 143. Uh, so let us read just the relevant portion here. The quote states, when all the other children of Adam have had the privilege of receiving the priesthood and of coming into the kingdom of God and of being redeemed from the four quarters of the earth and having received their resurrection from the dead, then it will be time enough to remove the curse from Cain and his posterity. He deprived his brother of the privilege of pursuing his journey through life and of extending his kingdom by multiplying upon the earth, and because he did this, he is the last to share the joys of the kingdom of God. Now, I'm going to keep this brief because it is a point that does not matter anymore. I would like to read this one quote from Bruce R. McConkie, an apostle of the Lord. Uh, he made this statement at an address to a uh, congregation at the Brigham Young University in 1978, shortly after the revelation on the priesthood that uh, extended the priesthood blessings to all worthy members. He states, It doesn't make a particle of difference what anybody ever said about the Negro matter before the first day of June of this year, 1978. It is a new day and a new arrangement, and the Lord has now given the revelation that sheds light out into the world on this subject. As to any sliver of light or any particles of darkness of the past, we forget about them. We now do what Meridian Israel did, when the Lord said the gospel should go to the Gentiles. We forget all the statements that limited the gospel to the house of Israel, and we start going to the Gentiles. So he's making reference here to uh, Peter in the Bible, uh, being told to preach to Cornelius, and to extend the blessings of the gospel to the Gentiles, when previously it had been reserved for only the house of Israel. In like manner, it doesn't matter what a previous prophet said doesn't matter if, it was, if what he said was right or what he said was wrong. God has given us new knowledge and new light, and that is all that matters. However, I would like to state one thing about what Brigham Young says. While he does list all the blessings of the gospel, getting the priesthood, coming into the kingdom, being redeemed, and receiving resurrection, he does not actually state that all these things have to come before the black race could receive any of them. He simply states that even if everybody else was to receive these blessings first, there would still be time for all members of the black race to receive the same blessings. The only actual statement he is making as a definitive declaration of truth is that the descendants of Cain, who are the black race, had to be the last to receive these blessings. He is not declaring an actual timeline for when it would happen.